हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर गौरव गुप्ता लिवर ट्रांसप्लांट सर्जन फ्रॉम फोर्टिस हॉस्पिटल मुंबई टुडे वी गोना डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड अ सीरियस टॉपिक एक्यूट लिवर फेलियर नाउ फर्स्ट वी विच वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एक्यूट लिवर फेलियर नाउ मेडिकली एक्यूट लिवर फेलियर इज डिफाइंड एज ऑनसेट ऑफ जॉन्डिस टू लिवर फेलियर व्हिच इज डिफाइंड बाय राइज इन अमोनिया लेवल कॉजिंग हेपेटिक एनसेफलोपैथी नाउ दिस ड्यूरेशन शुड बी लेस देन Six weeks. So that is the medical definition of acute liver failure. Now, to simplify this, uh, what is acute liver failure? For a normal uh, day-to-day uh, person to understand acute liver failure, this acute liver failure happens in the patients who have a totally normal liver. Their liver is not damaged. They have a normal liver. Because of some insult, there is a rapid deterioration of the liver function, and liver goes into total failure. rising to uh, ammonia level which goes to the brain causing encephalopathy patient will be sleepy there will be high inr things like that uh, now what, what are the causes of acute liver failure this is very important to understand so causes of liver failure uh, most common cause in india and eastern countries is viral hepatitis viral hepatitis can be hepatitis a hepatitis e hepatitis b there can be various other viruses like uh, hcv virus other kind of viruses which can cause acute liver failure if we talk about the western countries the most common cause of uh, acute liver failure is paracetamol overdose paracetamol is the most common drug which is available over the counter so people take paracetamol for pain uh, if, if you take more than 10 to 12 tablets even this 10 to 12 tablets can cause acute liver failure so that is a one very important and quite common cause of acute liver failure in western countries other th- other uh, etiologies which can cause acute liver failure are wilson's disease uh, acute uh, uh, autoimmune hepatitis and some drugs there are various other drugs which can cause uh, acute liver failure there are some poisoning like yellow phosphorus or rat oil poisoning which can also cause acute liver failure now once we know about the causes or etiology of the acute liver failure uh, the next thing to understand is how these patient presents and what is the treatment for these patients so mo- as i said most of these patients will have a young normal healthy liver and uh, the starting of the symptoms can be uh, as subtle as just the fe- fever now fever will be associated with rise in bilirubin level causing jaundice so yellow lash of your eyes of uh, your uh, fingertips so jaundice will start uh, if you get the lab test so bilirubin will be high the liver enzymes which has caused sgot and sgpt they will be high now normally this viral hepatitis most of the times it settles on its own you don't need any treatment for these viral hepatitis but once the liver starts to fail then that's a concerning thing so to what are the uh, blood test which tells us about the liver failure so the most important blood test will tells about the liver failure is the inr test inr is uh, international normalized ratio it tells us your blood is getting thin so uh, the one of the more important function of the liver is to produce blood clotting enzymes so our blood gets clotted because it's produced by the liver if the liver is start to fail there will be uh the uh, the blood does not clot and the uh, clotting properties goes down so uh, inr going up and other thing is patient start to get lot of sleep so they start to sleep in the day time not waking up and they are not responding to uh, what you ask through their names they start to forget about things so this is a sign which is very dangerous that it means this patient needs to be managed in a liver icu or a liver de- de- dedicated liver center so this uh, condition is called hepatic encephalopathy and it is dis- it is uh, diagnosed by doing a simple blood test by doing a blood ammonia level the ammonia level in these patient will start to go up so it goes from 50 to 100 to 200 300 so once the blood ammonia level goes up patient will go into deep comatose state so this is an acute liver failure now these are the very critical and very dangerous patients the why i said dangerous patient because if they are not properly managed so there can be lot of various complication happens 
So these patients needs to be managed by a uh, liver unit in a ICU setting. They cannot be managed in any other hospital. They should be managed in a hospital which have a liver transplant facility. Because the reason why I'm saying is, uh, if the patient crosses certain parameters, uh, the parameters are called King's College criteria. Once they cross those certain parameters, then the liver transplant remains the only solution. That's the only definitive therapy which can cure these patients. If we don't go ahead with the transplant, then the lot of patient very high mortality will happen in these patients. So that is why these patients need to be managed in a ICU setting with a transplant backup. Now, once these patient gets admitted, we all we start them on uh, antibiotics because uh, these there is a very high risk of getting infection on in these patients because the liver is gone, and uh, liver is also responsible for the immunity in our body. So the liver is not working well, our body immunity goes down. If body immunity goes down, high risk of infections. So that is why we start them on prophylactic antibiotics. These patients are monitors. Uh, on a hour by hour basis uh, for their kidney function, heart functions, lung functions because the liver damage can affect all these organs also. Uh, now again, once, uh, once they, these patients crosses certain thresholds, uh, which again as I told you it's called King's College criteria, then these patients should be go for liver transplant as early as possible. Uh, these patients should be transplanted within 24 hours or 36 hours. So uh, that is the only way we can treat these patients. Now results of these uh, are transplant. So obviously these patients are sicker patients. So these patients carries a little bit higher risk uh, of uh, complication even after transplant as compared to the other patient who undergo a liver transplant. On an average, we say the success rate of patient undergoing liver transplant for acute liver failure is close to 85%, 85 to 90%, depending on patient to patient. Sicker the patient, obviously higher risk of complication. Uh, these patients may take a longer time for recovery and uh, they may remain in the ICU even after transplant for a long time. Then they may need a longer prolonged intubation, long ventilatory support, they may need artificial dialysis. So all these things needs to be done. That, that's the only way we can salvage these patients. Now, good thing is once patient comes out of this transplant, he recovers, they have an excellent quality of life and they live just like any other normal person. Uh, and long term effect is very minimal. They don't have any long term side effects from this surgery. They, they can live a just normal effect. Only thing is they need a uh, lifelong immunosuppression to keep their liver healthy. So that's the only thing which they need to take and then can, they can live a normal healthy life. So that's just briefly about uh, acute liver failure. So we learned today about uh, what is acute liver failure. We learned about the causes of acute liver failure. We learned about how the acute liver failure patients present and the treatment or the therapy of the acute liver failure. Thank you.